for you, but we can at least talk about some of the issues. And, and diarrhea and urgency are certainly a common symptom, and it's not surprising when you have a digestive illness like Crohn's or colitis. So a few things here to think about. The first is, uh, is what is diarrhea, which sounds a bit existential, but, you know, uh, Diarrhea means different things to different people. Um, and uh, if you just use that word, maybe it doesn't communicate everything that you're feeling. So diarrhea can reflect the frequency that you go to the bathroom. It can reflect the, reflect the volume that's being passed. It can reflect things like urgency uh, to find a toilet. And all those things may have uh, slightly different uh, causes. So it's important to think what diarrhea is. And I will tell you, it's considered that normal human bowel habit is anywhere from three bowel movements a day to three bowel movements a week. So someone going twice a day uh, is not really uh, abnormal, but you know, but it's, but it's important to, when you're talking to your healthcare provider, actually tell them what you're experiencing, not just saying I've, I've got diarrhea. That's the first thing. And managing expectations is important too. And I, I say this because there are scenarios where uh, you're really not gonna be able to get rid of these things. And a, a good example of people who've gone through major surgery for ulcerative colitis and have an iloanal pouch in place where the small bowel is really connected directly to the anus. It's unrealistic to think that patients in that scenario will not have to deal with diarrhea. And the average person in that situation really goes to the bathroom about eight times a day. It's loose. And, you know, and so managing expectations is important. What is possible? Uh, and we'd like to make everyone feel completely well and normal, but sometimes that's not possible. The other thing is to try to treat the underlying cause. Uh, uh, diarrhea can reflect lots of things, uh, including active inflammatory bowel disease, active Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So number one on the list, if you've got Crohn's or colitis, is to treat that better uh, in order to bring it under control if there's active inflammation. So treat the underlying disease. You also have to think of things that have maybe aren't directly related to IBD that can cause diarrhea. Uh, these can include infections, of course, uh, There are uh, viral infections that have nothing to do with IBD. Bile salt malabsorption. It's, uh, some people don't uh, reabsorb their bile very well, and that can cause a lot of diarrhea. And that's particularly an issue in people who've had surgery uh, to remove parts of the small bowel. That can be a common cause of diarrhea that isn't directly related to active uh, IBD. And some people do have this concept of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It's a bit controversial, but it's where uh, bacteria may take up residence uh, in parts of the bowel where they're not supposed to thrive and they interfere with your own digestion and compete with you for your food and in doing so create diarrhea. You also think about diet, you know, lots of dietary intolerances are out there and uh, uh, these affect people with and without uh, inflammatory bowel disease, but things to think about that are common would include lactose and dairy products, fructose, uh, you know, corn syrups and, and fruits all have lots of fructose. Caffeine, uh, unfortunately, for those of you who love your coffee, it can trigger diarrhea. Sweeteners and particularly things like sorbitol, which are in sugar-free gums and candies, can in some people cause diarrhea and alcohol can also contribute. And so you might want to try to cut back on all of those things if you're experiencing this. Too, too much fiber, fiber is a bit of a two-edged sword. It can make diarrhea worse, can make diarrhea better. Fatty foods can be an issue. And if uh, a safe uh, diet, if you're experiencing a lot of diarrhea, it sort of comes and goes. If you're going through a bad phase, is to revert to a brat diet, you know, the banana, rice, applesauce, toast diet, which is very well uh, tolerated. In fact, bananas are a great food for, for diarrhea. Uh, interestingly, there's a little bit of literature suggesting that things like marshmallows might be good, but that's eating a marshmallow only diet uh, may not be uh, in your best interest. But Occasionally, marshmallows have a bit of uh, gum in them that can, that can give the stool a bit more form uh, for occasional use. Be very aware of the gut-brain access, and we talk about anxiety and stress. We'll come back to that at the end, but often changes in bowel habit are your body's way of expressing internal stress, and you know, dealing with uh, stress can often help bowel function as well. Uh, but we often end up treating empirically. If, if you can't find any of these reversible factors, uh, then you know you may just need something to try to slow the bowels down. And uh, what might be on that uh, that list? So it's just a little slower change. Uh, a lot of the things that can help control diarrhea. Uh, there are things that uh, act. Uh, we call opioid receptors. So those are things all vaguely cousins of opium and morphine, but uh, 
designed to control diarrhea without having the brain effects of the of narcotics. But that, in fact, is Imodium is in that family. There's a prescription therapy similar to Imodium called Lomatil, and there's a newer prescription therapy that can also help diarrhea called Viburzi. These are all options for you. There are, I mentioned bile salt malabsorption as a cause of diarrhea. There are uh, medications that can help to mop up extra bile in the digestive tract. And some of you may have tried these. Uh, Alestir is one, Colested, and there's a, one that's not very used very often. It's a newer one called Lodalis. But these are all what we call resins. You, you drink them, and as it passes through, it kind of mops up and binds some of the irritants that can cause diarrhea. For some people, uh, uh, using medications that reduce spasm. Uh, it needs to be medications often used for irritable bowel syndrome, but they can help people with IBD as well. Dicetel and Modulon are a couple. There are people who benefit from probiotic therapy and there are many probiotics on the market. Uh, and it's probably very individual, which one might help an individual person. So a lot of trial and error, but a line is an example of something that's out there. And then there are some antibiotics, which have been studied Again, more in irritable bowel syndrome, but there's no reason they couldn't be considered in IBD, such as rifaximin that can help diarrhea uh, as well.